ladies and gentlemen we have won ourselves yet another kvk so today in this video i'm gonna break down sort of what happened and unfolded throughout the kvk i'm also gonna share with you guys of course my hall of heroes the commander pairs that i used during this kvk as well as the equipment that's on them and then i want to talk a little bit more about kvk why i don't stream kvk and a couple of other things later in the video but first cheers okay first things first let's get the hall of heroes out of the way okay a lot of people want to see this i have over 2.2 million dead troops most of them are tier 5 units luckily i'll get a nice chunk of them back okay but this was uh this was probably the most bloody kvk that i've ever been a part of if not the most it's definitely uh, top two okay this was an insane kvk as i'll explain throughout this video but yeah tons of dead troops uh, i got 15 million severely wounded or kills in this kvk i didn't push for the 30 okay by the time that we pretty much secured king's land there was a lot of kill organization going on you know kill trading and things like that that's not something that i've ever done on my account and maybe that's why my kill points are so much lower than some people but to me i just can't be bothered to kill trade it's just i show up to the fights that matter and if we win we win if we lose we lose it is what it is so my kill points uh, I did break 1 billion kill points during this kvk here's the breakdown we got uh, more tier 5 kills than anything so I feel good about that it's about quality kill points over quantity kill points ladies and gentlemen I'm not impressed if you're kill trading it doesn't matter to me okay so let's take a look at what actually went down during this kvk now I'm in kingdom 1568 which means I'm in the daybreak camp alongside 2462 our allies for this kvk were the earth camp wind camp and the water camp so right off the bat with our kingdom being in the center bottom of the map pass four opening meant that we would have fighting going on on the left side and also on the right side of our map so if we zoom out here San Pedro was our starting zone and off to our left was midnight this was a zone that we didn't really fight in at all when pass four first opened we focused all of our efforts into Okuri which was off to our right up against Greenwood which is in the bottom right corner here this was around the time that I was actually moving to this apartment so I was present for the opening of pass four and all the fighting that happened right at the beginning but the rest of what happened here in Okuri was sort of a blur to me because my entire life was in boxes and I my car broke down at that time as well so it, it was just it was chaos like a month ago okay but anyway we were able to push Greenwood back out of Okuri and we ended up building multiple forts on their pass here and at that point we were chilling we secured the zone and we pretty much hung out until pass five opened now when pass five opened we pushed into Betafo and this is where we first started to fight midnight right because remember they were able to take matcha no no problem easy peasy lemon squeezy and we're fighting them up here we were actually doing okay but the problem was we weren't burning them fast enough for our forts to hold over here in okuri so at that point once our about 24 hours later once our forts were basically burned up greenwood dropped a bunch of forts here in okuri i think they dropped a bunch of them over here it was probably three or four different forts at one point in the kvk there were like nine forts stocked up against one pass I don't remember exactly where it was but like that was the moment in time where I just could not believe that that fort stacking was still a thing and, and Lilith hasn't fixed that yet but that's a complete side note so essentially it was a 2v1 at that point because Greenwood was fully broken out of their starting zone and into Okuri so we were kind of split in two it was our camp daybreak versus two camps it was Greenwood coming up into our zone and we were still fighting in Betafo against midnight at that point there was no way that we could proceed further into Betafo and also keep Okuri secure so at that point we were pretty much locked back in our home uh, in our home zone chilling in our starting zone we're farming for for a little bit okay and eventually past six comes along and water camp had a bunch of forts stacked up against this past six I think they had like three or maybe four forts completely stacked up against here and the idea was that water was going to push out of past six and fight Greenwood that way we could push out of our past four and get back into Okuri perhaps even drop a fort or something in here secure this zone a little bit better so that way we can push through past five and actually get into King's Land and this was when the bloodshed really started this was when it started to get absolutely ridiculous water was doing their best they were holding their pass there were multiple instances where water was taking constant double rallies to their pass and they were doing their best to take some of the heat off of us 
pushing through into Okuri. At one point, we got the ability to drop a fort into Okuri, um, and there was a little bit of debate as to where this fort should have gone. Some wanted us to drop it closer to pass five. Others wanted us to drop it closer, farther into Okuri, maybe to help fight with water over here. I'm not entirely sure how that all went. All I know is we dropped a fort very close to our pass and it was unsuccessful. We did not make the fort happen. It, 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 it didn't work out. Okay. We got overwhelmed fort got burned down. And at that point we were like, okay, the only way that we are going to get through is by just burning just straight up good old fashioned. We turned into a ball of lava. That's what it was. I think, uh, miss mayhem, one of the leaders here in the kingdom, that's how she described our kingdom. And ever since then, I've decided that that is the best way to describe kingdom 1568. We are a ball of lava. Okay. So at that point we had no way to drop a fort, but we were determined and we just started burning. We started burning. We decided, okay, all we have to do is burn from from past four to past five is 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 that's a straight line we're just gonna burn all the way through and after a couple of days of insane fighting both here and water but doing their plan offense defense back and forth type of thing we made it happen we pushed all the way through okuri all the way through all the flags and forts and all the other bs that happens here in kvk and we get to pass five and eventually we push through pass five and now we are fighting greenwood as well as midnight which is has already been in betafo and we're pushing out okay uh, and at this point um obviously midnight had a few different forts here and we were taking the pass burning the forts and then midnight would take the pass back and we would rally the pass and this is where things started to get really really deadly it eventually got to the point where we actually started giving midnight the pass five because we were getting trades like this pretty consistently and that felt really good just as a side note man we got there are some insane reports in here boys like this is I mean look at the date here it's 11 3 11 3 11 3 like every single one of these reports dude this is 11 4 the next day oh my god dude anyway we're getting insane reports here at this pass and at this point this is when midnight realizes that you know we're three days away from Kingsland or two days away from Kingsland something like that uh and midnight is realizing and we're realizing that you know we have nothing to lose by fighting here but midnight didn't want to keep doing the back and forth at least as this is my understanding and i got you guys got to know i'm not part of leadership in this kingdom i don't i'm not in any of those calls i'm not in any of those group chats I, i'm just i'm a field fighter and a, and a marketer basically i'm marketing the kingdom i'm a content creator that's what i do okay but it's my understanding that we're doing this back and forth here okay and midnight suggests hey why don't we just do a ceasefire king's land is going to be in just a couple of days we're not getting anywhere you're not getting anywhere you're not coming into our zone and we obviously can't come into your zone so why don't we just save the troops for king's land okay so the daybreak leadership basically took a look at the situation and said okay well up here in broughton uh earth camp and the wind camp up here were not doing so well okay they were not doing well in this zone they were losing to thunder over here on the left and fire so we said okay we'll agree to a ceasefire if that also means a ceasefire in broughton as well for our allies because it wouldn't make sense for us to stop fighting before king's land if our allies were going to keep getting pummeled in this zone so thunder and fire were approached with the idea of uh, you know having a ceasefire in that zone and apparently they thought that we were asking for a ceasefire in that zone when in fact it wasn't our idea to begin with so then this mail is sent out by the by the enemies here basically saying that you know they're doing a good work fighting presence has been good and they mistakenly told their entire coalition that we asked for a three-day truce claiming that we're scared of them and that we should gargle their balls so that was very classy of them uh and they basically declined they were like we're not going to cease fire in the zone because we're going to take this zone no problem why should we give this zone to you yada yada whatever the case is so they declined and at that point we took bufu and we dropped a fort here and we had like a couple of wells teleport in and basically forced the fighting to stop uh, all on our own. Okay. So that's how that happened. Fire and Thunder thought they were going to take this zone. They thought they had it in the bag. Turns out they didn't take it. And that left us not taking Betafo as well. So at that point, there was basically a day left until Kingsland. So we came over here, we dropped our fort and we basically hopped the mountain into Kingsland when Kingsland opened. And the funny part about Kingsland opening is that pretty much everybody failed their past seven 
except for us there, there was probably maybe one other camp was able to take their past seven but we were by far the first like we we were halfway through king's land by the time everybody else took their past seven which was extremely embarrassing for everybody involved i even think one of our allies failed past seven okay so i'm not just like talking smack to talk smack pretty much everybody failed it except for us but that gave us a really nice advantage it was like a good 10 15 minute advantage into Kingsland, which I mean, that's, that's a flag or two, right? Like that's, that's progress into Kingsland. This is a small zone. Okay. You can't be giving up that much time. Right? So anyway, we push into Kingsland. We're fighting with our allies across the map. And honestly, I think the Kingsland fighting was decided in like 24 hours, maybe less. Uh, I was up until like two in the morning when this, or maybe one in the morning, two in the morning when this first opened. And then I went to bed and apparently after I went to bed, um, basically our kingdom just formed a murder ball and just did laps around King's land, just supporting in every single corner. And that, that was pretty much it. There was a ceasefire that was involved. And this is one of the things where I get messages like this, right? Okay. We see this is on 11 five. This is back when we were, this was like when we were doing the fighting over past five. Um, and we weren't doing so hot and this guy slides in my DMS goes, hello, YouTube. Right. Uh, and I just, you know, do a little thumbs up. I don't, it's, it is what it is. And then he tells me to go live. He wants me to live stream us failing in KBK, right? Like the audacity of this dude. Right. But my favorite part is three days later, three days later, when we've completely dominated, we get this, your Alliance is cheater. He's cursing at me calling me an a-hole right and and this is why i never show my face in in lost kingdom chat right because it's people like that it's camps like thunder camp that just are non-stop in lost kingdom chat they're cocky they're arrogant they decline ceasefires they send out messages saying that we should lick their ball whatever the whatever the case is right but at the end of the day when your kingdom is made of lava the fighting speaks for itself that's pretty much it so after we took king's land we went ahead and pushed into thunder starting zone and basically stomped every single cockroach we could find and basically proved that if anybody's gonna lick balls uh it's gonna be them now we had a lot of people watching this kbk from the outside looking in and we also had a lot of our allies and our enemies even reaching out to us asking how we're so effective in the open fields and i think that might be one of the reasons why this guy called us a cheater right because we are so unbelievably organized in the open field that people don't even understand how our kingdom operates so smoothly and it's really simple it's really really simple we are extremely and by we i mean the leadership okay i'm not responsible for all the hard work that goes into this and i thank the leadership of my kingdom deeply for all the effort that they put in but the leadership in my kingdom is constantly trimming fat obsessively right we are constantly encouraging people who aren't pulling their weight to migrate out of the kingdom if they don't then eventually we end up zeroing people who are just bloated in power and wasting power for the kingdom a lot of times we are all in discord like that's it's it's really that simple we are often on voice chats especially for pass openings like there's always at least probably 15 or 25 people in voice chat in discord for every pass opening every time it's important every time there's big fights going on we're talking over voice and on top of that we use a billion markers we use a billion markers when we're fighting and that's how we get so many effective murder balls and at the end of the day the mentality of our kingdom is that we will zero ourselves trying to win that, like that that's really it pretty much everybody in the kingdom has that mentality like if we're going into kvk we're fighting until there's no troops left right uh, the only exception to that is if our allies decide to give up or, or, or basically call and say, Hey, there's no way we can keep fighting. Then of course we're going to stop because there's no point in just getting troops killed for no reason. But until that happens, we are not going to stop fighting. Like we will get zero trying to win and everybody is on board with that. And that's, and that's pretty much how you have to play. And just to prove my point. Okay. Here are the stats for our kingdom in this KVK. Now keep in mind, guys, we are not an Imperium kingdom we are in a seed kingdom and the kill points that were put on the board for this kvk are just disgusting for an a seed kingdom my man over here in first place final kill points dude he has five times my lifetime kill points in one kvk like do you understand how how insane this is as far as kill points for one kvk it's insanity okay and just i mean and the rest of these dudes are just crazy it, it's just crazy um i did not make it in the in the what is this top 20 because the players in this kingdom are just 
they're just phenomenal okay i came in 74th if you guys were wondering that's how that's how absolutely insane these players are in this kingdom anyway let me show you guys some of the armies that i was fighting with here in the kvk so of course my uh, primary march here is my guan with my cpo this is the gear that i've been running on my guan cpo i think this is a very effective um set it gets me a bunch of different uh, legendary pieces it basically minimizes my uh infantry attack i have like no infantry attack here at all guan yu provides enough attack plus all of the kvk tech that i that you get here i just went all in on defense and health here and i think that this is a really good strategy dagger is something that i always put on an infantry march uh it just seems to me like if you're going to be debuffing the enemy you want to put it on a march that is going to survive the longest and typically the tankiest armies are the are the infantry armies of course we have the ring of doom as well because the out damage output of this march is just insane i feel like this march requires the least amount of explanation because it's just so good this is the second army that i'm using here my nevsky primary with my william secondary you can see i have a uh, four different legendary uh, pieces of gear and plus one accessory you can see we've got five legendary pieces on this set this is another very high damage output march which is why i threw the ring of doom on here we have pretty much all defense and health pieces in the uh, the chest the gloves the legs and the helmet the helmet is more of a micro optimization but it's something that i really wanted to go for we also have the two piece set bonus with extra health here as well so that's really nice now the other thing that i did for this kvk was i actually expertise my william uh, i had my william at 5551 for the longest time and that is a really good value build but i think a lot of people forget that like bringing him to expertise is actually really good like williams william is a really good commander to expertise because essentially what you're doing here is you're getting double the amount of defense buff for that three seconds which i think is really important for this march really william doesn't have that much tankiness on him and so you're really relying on your gear and your nevsky for the tankiness so that extra 10 percent of defense i think is really helpful also the expertise here gives you another 10 percent of attack and it increases the damage factor dealt to surrounded targets by a pretty nice margin so while you do get most of the value at 5551 I think for me going into this kvk this was a good way to just add a little bit more tankiness a little bit more punch a little bit more damage to my Nevsky March without having to invest in Joan right because that's really what it was I already had the 5551 William did I want to go all in an expertise Joan for this KVK I decided against it because I could just put some of those sculptures into William save a 300 sculptures for whatever the next meta is and still have an insanely good cavalry pair I think William is exceptionally good and I do not regret that expertise whatsoever taking a look at my third army that I used here was my Boudicca primary with Nebu secondary now here we have uh no YSG which I definitely felt guilty about um but this was one of those KVKs where every single army had to min max damage output to damage received and I feel like Nebu is just a little bit more tanky than uh, YSG even though he gets uh YSG gets his um you know his relic gets him 10 percent defense of course there's a lot to love about the damage output there but for me um expertise Boudicca and a 5515 Nebu is just it's just a little bit more tanky and that's really what I wanted for we wanted to go for obviously if I had our girl Artemisia I probably would have done Artemisia with Boudicca but I wasn't going to again expertise a whole nother commander just for this KVK so this is what I went with the expertise on Boudicca is insane obviously the extra damage here the 15 percent increased damage from Nebu's fourth skill is just super good right it's it's super good yes he doesn't have the skill damage buff that YSG has but he's also reducing the target rage he's giving you even more defense more March speed and he still has a five target uh solid AoE which I think is really nice so this is a pair that I like a lot um I think if you are free to play or a low spender um you could probably skip Nebu and just go Boudicca YSG but for me this is a pair that I found really effective now if we take a look at the gear here I got super lucky with the uh with the two pieces of um of archer gear that I did end up crafting I did that crafting on a live stream maybe you guys were there but I crafted the chest and the gloves and both of them got talent on the first try which was absolutely insane especially that chest piece oh my god so much archer health here it's incredible um we also have the revival chest and legs it gets me the two piece set bonus for the extra attack plus they're both defense pieces which I like we also have the flame treads for extra archer health I threw on the horn of fury here 
for this March because I want the most amount of skill shots out of these two commanders, right? We really maximize the AOE here with, with Nebu having that, um, having the horn and also Boudicca debuffing the target and making them take 35% extra skill damage is super important. And one of the things that I did the, basically this entire KVK was chase the Boudicca, right? If I saw Boudicca in, in the open field, that was my first target every single time without fail. I would always go for the Boudicca because whatever she's hitting, she's dealing a ton of uh, damage to, and also is making them take a ton of more skill damage from everywhere. So getting rid of the Boudicca is top priority. And this is the Archer Parrot that I ended up going with. And as you can see, I can't even fill a full March here with tier five archers. Uh, we did a lot of Archer rallies. There was a lot of, of use for archers and I just was not prepared for that. I did not train enough archers. And then for my fourth March, I actually did a Martel primary with Herald secondary. Now I know I've made a lot of videos talking about uh, Herald primary with uh, Martel secondary. And I, I'm, I'm really conflicted. Okay. Um, in, in the first KVK that I used these two, um, I found that Herald primary was better in this KVK. I found that Martel might be slightly better, but it's, it's really hard to say. Okay. I think if you have a Martel primary Herald secondary, um, you take trades a little bit better if you're swarmed but the probability that you get swarmed is higher. I think people are more likely to hit a, hit a Martell than they are to hit a Herald. That's just the reality because people see Martell and they assume that it's a free to play player or, uh, you know, a, a weak player, a player that doesn't have better legendaries to use. So Martell is, is targeted more than Herald in my experience, but you know, when both are going to get swarmed, I think the defense tree does end up helping Martell quite a bit. You lose out on the rage generation of Herald and honestly, I think both have there's a use for both primary uh, it just depends on what the status of the kvk is for me i needed maximum tankiness that's really what i needed because this, the fights were so drawn out it was so long uh, that i decided to go for martel primary for this kvk moving forward i don't know if that will continue to be the case um, but also martel primary performs better in sunset canyon lost canyon things like that so yeah, there was a couple reasons why I switched back to Martel primary. I think both are viable here. You can see, I actually did throw the soccer of Ubuki on this March, um, because I already had a ton of defense here with Martel and I really just wanted to maximize the damage output. That's really what I wanted to do here. Um, I threw the eternal land on here because Harold does reduce his own defense. And so I would rather have defense on the legs than health. Now I also threw the Moore's web on here because just like the dagger, um, I want to be able to debuff the target as much as possible and i found that you know this lasts longer if you put it on a march that is a little bit more tanky realistically i would have liked to put this on my nevsky but my nevsky just i would have had to take off a talented piece and then it's i'm losing value there so i was kind of conflicted with that but regardless this was my fourth march that i was using both are expertise obviously and that was pretty much it i didn't use a fifth march um this fifth march slot was used for basically refilling rallies or refilling garrisons that's kind of what i did here a lot of our enemies in this kvk were using older commanders because they're younger kingdoms so we saw a lot of um south south we saw a lot of some epic commanders I saw some herman and kusanoki in the open field so those were easy fun kills to get now i do want to talk briefly about why i don't stream my kvks there's actually a couple of reasons um the biggest one is that a lot of the fighting here was happening when i moved and also my new setup here like this actual computer setup that i'm using um i cannot hardwire my internet in like i used to be able to at my old apartment so i actually had to upgrade my wireless card on my pc so that way i can get five gigahertz i know crazy 2022 my pc didn't have that capability but again when i bought this computer the expectation was that i would always be hardwired in so it wasn't until literally like four or five days ago that I even could live stream on this PC at this current apartment. So that was the biggest reason why. Um, the other reason, like I mentioned earlier, is trolls. People in uh, Lost Kingdom chat, you know, they realize that I'm live. They come in and, you know, most people aren't trolls and mo it's not really a big deal. Uh, it's, you know, you just ban people or whatever, but it's just, I don't like to, I just don't like to deal with it, honestly. Like if people come into the live stream chat, even if it's only one out of 50 people or one out of 30 people, that's, that's a troll it's just annoying to me right and if i'm busy fighting if i'm focusing on actually fighting in kvk i don't want to have to also focus on moderating my chat it's just annoying to have to deal with when you're actually in kvk uh when i'm not in kvk and i'm live streaming it's not that big of a deal because i just ban people or whatever and usually the probability that trolls come into the chat is a lot lower right because people kvk lost kingdom chat is such a it's, it's such a fun thing people love to talk smack people like to just be annoying and obnoxious and uh, i think that you know that can transition into the live stream chat which i just don't want to deal with but also when i'm fighting in kvk i'm really just focused on playing the game
game right i'm focused on actually micromanaging my troops sending out troops making sure i'm getting decent trades making sure i'm sending troops to the right locations or i'm on voice chat with my alliance and i want to hear like what the plan is what we're doing and if i'm so focused on fighting and playing the game uh it's hard to focus also on on the live stream right and i think that if i'm just sitting here playing rise of kingdoms without talking to you guys and focusing mainly on the fighting to me that's boring okay i don't know about you guys maybe you disagree maybe this is an unpopular opinion but if i'm just sitting here playing and fighting um that's a boring live stream for me as a viewer if i were to watch uh, someone live streaming kvk fighting even if the fighting is good uh if there's no like audience interaction there then that's just that's just not something that i'm interested in in watching and so it's also not content that i'm really interested in making now that's not to say that i will never live stream a kvk uh, i may actually do it but for this kvk specifically i just technically couldn't do it before we end i'll just go through the uh the shop here so i did end up buying out pretty much everything here in the shop and now i'm saving up for a skin a city skin i'll probably go for twilight falls it's kind of shocking that i've played the game for so long and i don't even have this but i just never really saw the need to get any of these skins because i already have a zenith of power skin so yeah i would just spend all my coins on these but next kvk for sure getting the twilight falls also i would spend a lot of my coins getting these like blueprints and stuff right so i actually did buy a vengeance here um this is in case i do expertise pakal i'm gonna go with this and even if i don't uh i'm gonna go probably with it anyway down the line when i do get the conquest coins from this kvk i'll be buying the hammer of the sun and moon this is if you guys don't know the best in slot weapon for infantry yes it's infantry attack but it is so much infantry attack that it actually is the best weapon that you can get for infantry so i'm excited to get my hands on that the cost to uh craft this is extremely high but I'm gonna do it because i'm insane and for those of you that want to see where my kvk tech ended um this is where we're at here so i maxed out everything going forward all the way up until we get to quench blades three and these other uh, sort of attack boosting ones um when i was fighting i had all three of these at nine and this was at like zero uh, and then i started going up into like special medicines is super important special medicine here is super important um i don't think i i had maybe one percent of bonus damage for kingsland fighting um that's pretty much it uh, i made a lot of the progress on the uh on this like late game tech after the fighting was already over um i did buy i think most if not all of the pop-up bundles and i also bought the five dollar like crystal mine uh enhancement thing over here the premium season crystal supply whatever um the 50 percent bonus here is super useful so yeah but i didn't buy any of the um mountain warfare packs i didn't buy any of the conquerors will packs i didn't i didn't do any of that stuff because that's just annoying to me and i don't want to have to max kvk tech right at the beginning of kvk just to have fun um i also purchased the little battle pass here the crystal quest battle pass um and i think i got to level 40 for king's land something like that so yeah i did spend probably more than i wanted to on this kvk but this was definitely a kvk that was worth spending on for me from an entertainment perspective from a fun perspective uh i wish crystal tech wasn't in the game so we wouldn't have to do that but it is what it is now my kingdom probably will do some level of recruiting after this kvk i have not discussed it with Lee Leadership, so I have no idea but if you guys want to join me in Kingdom 1568 and you are a heavy fighter then these are the people that you can reach out to you can see it right on the screen here Ta Mayhem perhaps even RK I know he's not listed here but he's he's often online these are the expectations that the kingdom sets for KVK so if this if your power is between 60 and 70 million and you can't get 8 million kills and 800k deads for your KVK just as an example then don't bother applying to the kingdom because they are very strict with the expectations for players anyway guys if you enjoyed the video and you want to honor the fallen troops go ahead and drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe to the channel for more rise of kingdoms content and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload comment down below your thoughts on kvk the marches that i used were you in my kvk were you watching it let me know in the comment section down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon